My name is Miguel. I'm 22 years old and based in West Texas. Since high school, I always considered myself a climate advocate and thought I knew about the climate crisis. But when I learned about the Permian Basin, my life changed. In 2020, I became the West Texas Field Associate at Earthworks, an organization fighting to stop the industries fueling the climate crisis and harming communities like mine. I grew up in El Paso, Texas and Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, right across the border. Being part of a migrant border community has made the climate crisis very personal to me. I've seen the interconnectedness between climate justice and migrant justice. Studies demonstrate that climate change is set to displace millions of people all over the world, especially in Latin America. I'm in shock really that I have lived close to this region my, my whole life, but I've not been aware to the gravity of what this means to the global climate crisis. My first impression of the Permian Basin was a sense of dread. This is where oil and natural gas are blasted out of shale bedrock deep underground in a process called hydraulic fracturing or fracking. Driving down Interstate 20, dozens of oil and gas sites and their flares blast with balls of fire. Intimidating mountains of machinery dominate the desert. An army of industry's white trucks patrol the entire area, moving through the pollution's stench. These emissions include harmful toxins and natural gas, which is really methane, a greenhouse gas 86 times worse for the climate than carbon dioxide. The Permian Basin is one of the largest producers of oil, gas, and gas liquids in the world, accounting for more than 30% of US oil production. Tens of thousands of wells have been drilled and fracked in the past decade, spanning an area of nearly 6,000 square miles. That's roughly the size of Kansas or Britain, Towns like Pecos, Texas, once known for its agriculture, sit at the center of all of this. A witness and a victim of this expansive fossil fuel boom that has made this one single region a dangerous climate bomb. My fellow earth worker, Sharon Wilson, has been tracking the Permian for over five years, making invisible greenhouse gases visible with an optical gas imaging camera. As senior field advocate, Sharon rides the front lines of this climate bomb, working with impacted communities to keep the oil and gas industry accountable. If people could actually see what I see through my lens, if you could see that with your naked eye, there would never have been a fracking boom. And the camera detects volatile organic compounds, and one of those is methane. The good news about methane is it only stays in our atmosphere less than 10 years. If we stop all the methane releases from oil and gas, our planet will have an immediate response to that, and this rapid warming that we're experiencing right now will slow. One of the big problems that oil and gas is having is keeping their flares lit. And if the flame is not lit, then that methane and volatile organic compounds are just blasting out into our atmosphere. So a pipe sticking up from the ground doesn't look as scary as a pipe sticking up with a great big flame on it. But actually, the flares are doing what they're designed to do to burn off the methane. If it's releasing raw methane into the air, that is very, very harmful to the climate. Other pieces of equipment you'll see at these sites are tanks that sit on the ground. It turns out 
they are also important sources of climate pollution. When the hydrocarbons come up from the formation, they all come up together. It's gas, different liquids, and the liquids go into the tanks. The gas should go into a pipeline. Some is flared, some is vented, but in the tanks, the gas is still mixed in with the liquids and it volatilizes and comes to the surface and then they can't keep the gas in the tank or the tank will pressurize and explode so they have to have pressure releases and you'll see pressure releases from the tanks that we call venting and this is a problem that the industry currently they have no solution they don't have the technology to stop these releases so the more they keep permitting new sites and expanding the higher the levels of methane in our atmosphere will go so isn't the government doing something about this? I ask Sharon what government agencies regulate this dangerous industry. The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and the Texas Railroad Commission that has nothing to do with railroads. So are these state agencies doing their job properly? No. I've made over 140 complaints to the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, and they've only taken action in 12% of those. And these are not just regular complaints, they're complaints with video evidence. This site over here is MDC Texas Operator, and I first made a complaint on this site last November. They didn't investigate it until May, so that's from November until May. And then they found six violations, and they told the operator that he had to fix it in August. And they did find that they had exceeded their permit levels. As we drove along I-20 West, Sharon pulled over to check out a booming, blaring noise that sounded like a jet engine coming from a site near the highway. We discovered a blowdown event. This is where companies dump methane from pipelines into our atmosphere so they can do maintenance or repairs. Uh, they have blowdowns all the time. They can't really work on a piece of equipment if the gas is in the system. They have to just blast it out into the air. There are other better ways that they could do it, but nobody makes them do it the better way, so they just blast it. They basically use our atmosphere as a dumping ground. In documenting this blowdown, we witnessed one of the many horrors that come with oil and gas pipeline transportation. Where here it was a methane blast, other pipelines threaten water contamination, explosions, or massive spills. This is a reminder of how fossil fuel transportation is inherently dangerous, and a reminder of how we should aim to stop fossil fuel production at the source. Unfortunately, the horror of the Permian Basin is not limited to Pecos, Texas. The fracked gas needs to be processed, transported, turned into electricity, or shipped off through the coast, where our dirty energy is exported to other countries. This infrastructure of the Permian Basin climate bomb sprawls throughout Louisiana, New Mexico, and Texas, including my hometown, of El Paso. We're here at the El Paso refinery owned by Marathon Oil. This relates to the Permian Basin in that what's extracted from the Permian Basin is sent back here to this refinery to be processed and sold. So we can see that the tentacles of the Permian Basin are not limited to the immediate region of this powerhouse, but it reaches even out here into El Paso and also into the infrastructure of throughout Texas and throughout Louisiana. On the ground, OGI videos demonstrate how oil and gas immediately pollutes the climate. And it's easy to recognize how the industry chokes those of us living here by the Permian. But it's important to realize that the Permian spews methane that fuels climate change worldwide. Everyone is affected by climate crisis and some more than others. 
Increased floods from sea level rise will continue to ravage coastal communities. Changing weather patterns will disrupt farm workers' health and sustainability. Fossil fuels will continue to disproportionately harm people of color and the poor. All of this skyrockets the number of migrants displaced by climate and food shortages. A 2021 report from Oil Change International reveals that if we don't radically change the status quo, the Permian alone will unleash grave climate destruction. The Permian is projected to increase its oil production 50% by 2030, if left unchecked. Burning all the fossil fuel extracted from the Permian between 2021 and 2050 could emit 42 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide. That's the equivalent of pollution from 360 typical U.S. coal plants. As for methane, data from the Environmental Defense Fund shows that the Permian emitted at least 275 billion cubic feet of methane last year. That waste is enough gas to serve nearly 5 million homes for a year. Scientists have demonstrated that natural gas and the Permian Basin are not needed for a clean energy future. In fact, studies have demonstrated that natural gas is actually more harmful to the climate than coal. Plus, Sharon's documentation over the years has proven that the laws meant to prevent climate pollution are failing, and that regulations cannot stop the industry's greenhouse gas emissions. We need strong federal rules because we need to protect the rest of the world from Texas. So what do we do? There are many people already fighting to stop the climate crisis. Our road ahead is difficult, but also hopeful. Recent environmental studies demonstrate that reducing greenhouse gas emissions could have a rapid, positive effect on our climate. But communities and climate will continue to suffer until fracking ends. Until it does, the Permian climate bomb will continue to explode. It's up to us to make sure the government does what is necessary.